Hi, uh, before I get started on the weaving video, I figured I should first show you um, that I have to wind my bobbins for my shuttle. And I have pieced together linen in a ball. And so I have to wind and wind and wind. And I got this with my used loom, this bobbin winder, and I thought, oh, I won't use it. Oh my gosh, I am so grateful for it. <laughs> Once I used it, I was like, yes, that's it. So, I will wind several bobbins, and I know I'll have to spin more. But as you can see, that is the first step. Okay, okay, so hopefully I have this in a position that works. Um, showing you how I set up. So I've got my little bobbin, and there's a dog getting iffy. So there's my shuttle all ready for weaving. I need to tighten it up. Oh, I forgot scissors. Um, I think I have some over here. Because whenever I see little threads like that where I tied a knot, um, I want to cut off the ends of those. Well, that's not a big deal there. We'll see if it gets caught up in anything. So, so tighten it up a bit. And, I forget, so I have this spray bottle that's really like just a spritz. And so I kind of put my hand underneath. I'm not used to doing this wide of a weave, so it should be challenging for me. And get it all a little damp because linen is stronger when it's damp. So, make sure. Hey, I'm back. Um, I'm hoping that this angle will help you see more of what I'm doing. Uh, I decided to come back because I wanted to show you some of the things that I was thinking of that might be helpful for somebody who's kind of new to it, like me. Uh, things you don't have to worry about. So also, I wanted to show you what I do with um, broken threads, which seems to work for me. Um, so, so far, and I have probably getting close to two feet woven. I have only had one thread break and it broke twice. And it was one of my double ones over here on this end. This end. So that's okay. I mean, the first time it broke was because I think it was thin. The second time it broke on the knot that I made. So I'm super excited about that. If you notice, my fingernails are still dirty. I didn't want to bleach my hands, but I still am suffering from the dye. <laughs> so this one broke close enough to here to where I am weaving that I will just kind of make a knot, a square knot. I can see um, close to that weaving. And then, I will take this, uh, I don't have my hook. So fortunately, this one is also um, close to the end. So it, when it's in the center, it's harder to find the uh, petal that it's hooked on. And this one is just the second one in. So that makes it pretty easy to access. So I pull it through the reed. See if that's gonna. Okay, did that mess it up? And then, um, so it would be my second heddle, and the thread's already still in there. Good. So I don't have to go to the back and not show you what's going on. So I could see that there's there's a bit of. Uh, 
knotted slubby in there. So I am going to smooth that out and get it wet and retwist and then pop off that knot. Now I have the loom or the weaving loosened up. So what I do to ensure that my tension is still kind of the same, I'll then hopefully you can see. Okay, yeah, uh, kind of. I wish I had a better camera, but can't afford it. So, so I kind of try to pull it snug, but you know you can't you can't get it exact. Well, I can't. So again, I'm just showing you my my technique for doing this and it seems to seems to work fine. So I kind of just do a loose square knot. Um, where are my ends? Kind of don't quite pull it all the way closed. Because what I want to do is I want to take the threads next to it and make sure that it's kind of the same tension. So I pull it up with other other threads. Now I'll tighten it. And let me get my scissors. Because I didn't come prepared, I guess. Oh, no, I did come prepared. All right. So put those ends. And uh, it's really like weaving's really tripping out behind one of my shoulder blades today. Um, you can see, I'll show you here this side. It seems like some threads are probably much looser than others. And I used to worry about that a lot. Uh, I've seen some people where they take the thread at the back of the loom and, and put a weight on it. But um, through my trials and tribulations, I've discovered that that kind of changes over time, which one's loose. So one might start to look like it's loose. And then in actuality, um, a few rows down, then it's not loose anymore. So I, did I bring my spray bottle? No, I did not. Okay. And another thing with, um, that I have read, and it seems to make sense to me, is um, with linen, you really only want to do a few, um, few inches at a time because you don't want the wear and tear that you might get on the heddles going up and down um, in one particular spot on the thread. So now that I've wetted that, and you can see some look looser than others. And, see, I might pull that one more quick. Yeah. So one thing that I have found is, um, is that on my loom, and I don't know if it's my loom or it's all looms. I mean, this is, um, this is a shocked uh, four harness loom, so, I mean, it's not, not like a cheap one. Okay, this is going to be awkward. Uh-oh. I got it caught underneath the, the loom. That'll be awkward with the tripod, but just to give you a, an idea... Eh. Did I do it? No, I did not. Never mind. Um, just to give you an idea how maybe uh, sometimes one thread seems loose in one direction or the other. And like I said, I learned that so this is not going as smooth because of the tripods there. <laughs> um, 
done on the other way, going the other way, then it doesn't seem to be a problem. So I double tap. And I have to get trained on how to do this with the tripod. So I'm looking to see if there are any. See, none in there. They all seem kind of the same tension there. But like I said, sometimes one will just seem to be looser. Um, and it's, it's weird, but don't freak out about it because it tends to tends to kind of even itself up. So I was happy to discover that because I just felt like I was a total failure at what I was doing. That like no matter what I did. And you watched me warp my loom. I, I was not um, incredibly scientific about the method, I guess you would say. Because um, there's, a, it feels like sometimes it doesn't need to be as complicated as everybody makes it out to be. But it is. It is tricky at times. And a little, um, I don't know, subject to weather and subject to so many factors. Uh, what I am discovering with what I've wo woven so far is what they say about um, Strix being a better warping thread because the the fibers themselves are longer it is so true. If these threads that I'm using, God, this is awkward. Um, if these threads that I'm using were from the toe or the top that I have been using, um, I would have broken so many by now because some of these are so thin. I can't even, sometimes when they're wet, I can't even see and I think I'm, I broke a thread because I can't, I can't see it. <laughs> but you don't quite get the sense of, I mean, I'd go faster than this, but you can see the tripod legs are right now. And then I bump them when I double tap and stuff. So there you go. And wrapped around a leg. But yeah, those are some of my thoughts uh, while I was while I was weaving that uh, might be helpful. And I'm also happy that I went with the uh, the 15 dent reed as opposed to the 20 because any of the knots that I have put in there don't seem to be uh, uh, rubbing and, and breaking because of the reed. And same goes with, you know, serious fat areas and fuzzy areas of the thread itself. So now probably I will be back when I'm all done. I'm gonna, I just dressed a distaff so that I have more to spin because I know I'm going to need more. It looks like one one of these bobbins gets me maybe 13 inches of uh, weaving. So yeah, I need a lot more. I only have this one and then about this much on another one. <laughs> so okay, I'll see you back here later. Hey, I am back and I feel like it's Christmas. This has been such a long haul. <laughs> Um, I didn't have nearly as many breaks as I thought I would have, and I thought it was going to go on forever. I thought I had to spin another bobbin, which is like another six hours. Uh, yeah, ibuprofen, learning how to weave so it doesn't destroy my shoulder blade for some reason. So, unveiling. I'm going to cut these strings back here. I am so excited. I feel so happy and proud of myself. So pull those through there. So and you can see I probably still have like a foot um, of threads. I will knot these all along the ends before I scour it, but I will save save those for doing um tassels and stuff. So, the unveiling. 
I don't even know how many feet. I, I'm going to say it probably ended up being 10 or 11, not 12, because there's like usually a foot at the beginning and a foot at the end. There's an interesting stripe. That'll all disappear. Oh my goodness! I am so excited. So I'm going to cut those. And again, not those ends too. But I have like all of this. Oh my gosh. I can't even stand it. I can't wait. I cannot wait to scour it. So um, scouring is essentially I will be simmering this in a pot of washing soda and um, dish dawn detergent and doing that several times because that's what gets all this grayness out and the brownness out and it will turn much whiter in the old days or if I had you know sunshine and a nice place to lay it out where animals and the wind and weather didn't destroy it I would lay it out for I don't know over the winter to bleach but I don't have that luxury or that time so there you go I will be back and show you the results of it having been scoured and hopefully get started on a cap tomorrow I can't stand it I can't stand it I'm so excited so see you next time all right I am super super excited it's wet um, I scoured it several times and had two different colors of flax in there and I am I am so excited <laughs> I need to hurry up and make a cap um, I did have one section I don't know why you can see it's like wrinkled like it was tighter like it was a different kind of fiber I can pull it out but it feels thicker and stiffer so I don't know what that is um, so I might, if I don't have enough cap for all the caps, um, since this is old flax and I kind of wanted to do something special, I might go ahead and stretch that on a frame and gesso it and make a painting on it because I dabble in painting now and then, oil paints. Um, so I think that would be kind of a neat tribute, maybe a flax flower, I don't know, something, maybe flax stalks that are drying, but I, I am so excited, it might took forever to get this clean, and it will dry whiter, right now it's a nice cream color, which I don't mind, at least it's all even and without a stripe. So I will add a picture of my first cap uh, when, when it's dry. It's pouring down rain outside. Fortunately, flax dries quick. So I'll just hang it in the house somewhere. Um, aim a fan at it. Because <laughs> I'm impatient. And I don't think I'm going to weave straps for it for tying under the chin. I'm, I can't find any pictures, but I think what I want to do is maybe just do cording. Because I think... I think in the old days they probably didn't want to waste any linen and I think doing cording um, would be quicker and use less uh, of the flax and linen. So I'm excited. So I will see you back here with a picture of the cap all finished and maybe I'll have my daughter try on some stuff and model it <laughs> okay no. thank you okay i'm back and instead of just showing you the finished hat which is not quite finished yet um you can see eh, trying to figure out where there we go this is the back and there's a seam and then there's a seam across the back of the crown and this is not hemmed in the front because that is um, the edges of the weave. 
So inside it looks like this. This is um, French seams. So I got it a little bit damp and something that a lot of people do with linen is essentially what's called um, mangling. <laughs> And it's kind of to smooth the fibers and get them in a good position. I'm trying to get that round seam on the back crown of the neck in a good spot on this glass container I have. And then I'm just going to be rubbing it to kind of oh, crease out the seams, but also it smooths out the threads. So I'll kind of go and do that all over. Uh, this is something a lot of times like on flat linens people will do because it helps create kind of a sheen. It also softens up the weave itself and the linen because as it's worn it gets softer but it, after you get it wet, it gets pretty stiff. So I'm just showing you how I'm kind of softening up the whole thing and getting those spots that maybe are a little looser woven, getting those to come up together, and just sort of softening up the whole thing. So I'll get the seams too, so that they will lay nice and flat and kind of give it a nicer, softer, worn feel. So that is a step. And when I'm done with this and it dries, I am doing cords. I'm just going to attach cords on these corners um, that are uh, finger loop braided which is apparently an old technique that was used off and on and I was playing around with it yesterday in the candlelight because our electricity went out but I was determined to try it <laughs> and kind of fell in love with it. So now the next time you see a picture here it will be of the finished cap and I might go ahead and turn this into two videos because it might might be a lot of video for just one. So that is mangling linen. <laughs>